Schaefer and today we're going to uh, finish the desktop. Um, actually this is going to be a two-day process because we're doing an epoxy finish. Uh, but to get started, first let me tell you about uh, what I've done since the construction of the tabletop. If you want to see how I built the steel tabletop, click on this link right here and that'll take you over to that video. Otherwise, um, so what I did here uh, was I rustified it before I put the blades on. So to rust it, I used a formula made up of uh, hydrogen peroxide. I recommend going to a beauty supply store and getting 13%. Uh, if you can find 30%, that's even better. Uh, but I've been told you can only get that in Mexico. So what I did was I uh, sprayed down the entire tabletop with uh, the 13% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, kind of let it sit a little bit. Um, and it started changing colors a little. Um, it started bubbling up. You could see like there's definitely a chemical reaction happening. Um, but I wanted to speed up the process and I wanted to give it more of a peppered look. So I thought, um, why not s throw some rock salt on there? Because I know salt is bad for steel. So I threw some rock salt down on the table and I got the peppered look that I was going for. Um, and then it started mixing with the, the hydrogen peroxide and kind of in dissolving and stuff and I let it sit for several hours and then I had this like just this mass of bubbles and crap all over so what I did was I took a stick or a board and I scooped it all together in the middle and kind of mixed it up and it was like this big rusty red foamy uh, like slush is basically what it was and then um, I respread that slush around the tabletop more evenly so that every part of the tabletop would get rusted. So I spread that on the sides, kind of like butter, just spread around and um, then I got this and I think it looks pretty cool. So anyway, that worked out really good. So I, that's what I recommend doing to rustify metal. Then I added the saw blades. Uh, the saw blades are nailed down just like the steel is. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add my logos. So I've got the Wilfer Mobile Sawmill logo, a Made in Colorado logo, Colorado State Forest Service member since 2013 logo, Colorado Forest Products logo, we're very proud of that, and then a Made in USA product. I should have been wearing gloves because uh, this stuff is actually pretty tacky. <laughs> and I tried washing my hands, but I think it's going to take a few washes to get that out. Foolish of me. Anyway. Next step, I'm going to use a matte finish. It uh, provides a permanent non-gloss finish which protects art, crafts, and valuables, eliminates light reflection, dries fast and clear, seals finished painting products, projects, and acrylic backgrounds for decorative painters. So basically what I'm doing with this is I want to seal up all of this rust because I don't want the rust uh, leaching into the epoxy and um, getting all weird. So I want the rust to stay put. I also don't want the epoxy soaking into the logos too bad. So anyway, this is just going to seal everything up so the epoxy can uh, can be spread without without taking anything with it. All right, so now I have to let that dry, and then we'll put the first coat of epoxy on. All right, so if you want to see a video about how to apply epoxy by Chris, um, click on the link that you see on the screen right now. The only difference with the way we do it now and the way that we do it in that video, because uh, that is kind of an older video, uh, Chris has changed his technique a little bit. What he does now on the first coat is he applies a really thin coat like I'm doing right now. And the thin coat is just brushed on and all it's supposed to do is just seal the wood and that, um, that leads to less bubbles when you put on the thicker coat. And so it just makes the whole process go a lot smoother. All right, so we got the first coat of epoxy on the table. Uh, it's a thin coat, so it hasn't quite covered um, all the three-dimensional shapes that's going on here. Um, it, but what it has done is it's sealed up the surface 
real nice. So now I can put a thicker coat on and not worry about bubbles and um, all that stuff. And hopefully the thicker coat will kind of hide uh, the rest of this stuff because I can still like feel the blades and then there's, uh, well, that's the biggest problem. The nail heads and stuff, all that stuff needs to get buried. So that's what the second coat's for and possibly a third coat. All right, so I guess I might as well start being honest right now and let you know that this is not going to go well. Uh, as you can see, I'm taping off the edge because I want to build up the top of the table and not the sides. I don't want it to run off the sides. Uh, I need to get those blades covered. So I'm planning on putting a really thick coat on here. Unfortunately, oh, and I'm leveling the table. That's all important. This is all stuff you'll see in Chris's video. Pay attention to... Uh, the mixing process. I am trying to mix way too much epoxy at once and I don't have big enough cups to be doing it and I'm also in a hurry and so I do I think like three different mixes for the one pour and they just don't get mixed together good enough and what happened was is uh, when you don't mix epoxy because those two chemicals are supposed to react with each other uh, if you don't mix them properly, they don't react, and those two chemicals alone, by themselves, without the other, uh, they never dry, they never set. Even the hardener never hardens without the other one. So, what ended up happening was, is the epoxy was, as it was drying, it was leaving like, kind of cobweb looking spots in the epoxy, and, in, and it wouldn't dry, it was gooey. There's nothing I could do. I even put some hardener on top of it, thinking that the hardener would harden it, and that was it didn't do it. it the hardener just sat there and, and wouldn't dry, and I was able to wipe it off with a, a soapy rag, and, uh, and those spots just wouldn't go away. And then I tried to do another coat on top of it to see if I could just bury it, and it, uh, it just got bigger somehow. I don't I have any idea. I've never seen it happen. Chris has never seen it happen. Um, probably because Chris properly mixes his uh, epoxy and I did not so anyway I paid a, a really big price for that and uh, and it didn't turn out and here's the thing uh, epoxy is kind of a do or die finish you screw up your epoxy like I just did uh, you're, well, you're fucked so this tabletop um, I tried stripping it just to see. I knew it wasn't going to work, but I couldn't let go. So I tried it. Obviously, didn't get very far. So now I get to redo my desktop. Um, I'm going to do things a little differently. I don't have enough steel to make another top this big. So I'm going to have to make a wooden top. And I think I'm going to wrap uh, the blades around the outside edge of the wood rather than across the top. It really sucks, but uh, I'm going to have to call it quits on this table and toss it. It really breaks my heart. There's a lot of time and money in this table. That's it, unfortunately. If you want to see how to glue up a nice big um, tabletop desktop, click on this video right here. Otherwise, uh, that's it. But at least, hey, look, the, uh, the rust thing worked. So you can use that. My gift to you. The rust worked. And then... Uh, Bending the steel worked, so I did good on everything else, just not, just not the epoxy. The epoxy is the last step, so that was the most important one to get right. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.